Coming up, I'm gonna share the best way to make more money right now. And then, out of the headlines, finally, big donation to college is being used for the right reasons. Let's go. All right, I'm here to help you win at work. And if you win at work, I got news for you. There's a good chance you're gonna win at life. And we gotta spend a lot of time there, so how about we win there? All right, let's uh, let's talk about winning with our work as it relates to I need money now. I need money right now, okay? It's not I'm not thinking about money five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. I'm not thinking about retirement. I'm not thinking about investments. I need money now. Now, if you're that person, uh, that is, um, uh, that's because you've got some maybe some debt that's just absolutely crushing you. And, and you can barely breathe. You know, the water is just, you're, you're barely making it paycheck to paycheck. Um, it could be you've got a, a big purchase that maybe popped out of nowhere. Maybe your HVAC system went out. Of the, went out. And, and maybe that's it. Um, maybe um, you've got uh, to save for uh, a big trip or something a year from now or six months from now. So it's not an emergency, but there needs to be urgency. Okay, so that's where we stand. So you go, I need money right now. I've got a full-time job and I'm not making enough money in the full-time job. So whatever the the other circumstances are, it, the bottom line is, is you need more money right now. And it's not as simple as you walking down the hall to your boss going, hey, listen, I need a fifteen dollars to $20,000 or $40,000 bump, right? So you get it. Okay. So that's where you stand. So uh, I, this is really practical stuff. And it's an overwhelming emotional feeling, by the way, when you have to make money. Because now you're going, oh gosh, uh, I've already got a full time job. I got family. I got all the things. Life is happening. And so, this is a super simple framework. If you ever get in this position or if you're in this position now, this is what you're looking for. Okay. Because that's what the overwhelming part is, is where do I find it? I know I need it. Where do I find it? Okay. So, here we go. All right. We're looking for short term money now. Where do you look? Ready? Here we go. We are looking for work that is, number one, available. It's available. Uh, This is low-hanging fruit is what I'm talking about here. This is a situation where uh, they need people right now. Okay, so uh, this is really simple. It could be a, a, a big box store who goes, we need people in the overnight shift stacking shelves right now and they're putting out the alarm and they're going we need people now it's good benefits it's good pay come on and you know what that means it means they just need somebody with a pulse right it's available there's low barrier for entry you can tell that they're desperate if i'm a person who's in your situation right now and i need money right now that's where i start I immediately go to, where's the desperation in the workplace uh, in my zip code? Where do they need somebody? Because it's a good chance if I show up with a smile and I don't look like a serial killer, that I'm going to get the job, right? It's available. They need people right now, and you represent a person. It's beautiful, okay? Next, what am I looking for? It's easy. It doesn't require skill or experience. It's not going to burn mental or emotional calories in in the onboarding or the training. It's just, again, it's it's another version of the first one, which is available, but it's also easy, right? It, it, It needs to be available, but another thing I'm looking for is it's easy. I don't need any skill, uh, it doesn't require any specific skill, just being a human. Uh, it doesn't require a ton of experience just being a human. And, and here's what's great about this. I'm making money, but I'm not burning extra mental and emotional calories. That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. Okay? So, quick review. It's available. It's easy. And number three, it's a good fit. 
Now, this is a different level here, but this is where you have the skill and you have the experience. And because you've got the skill, and by the way, skill is needed here. So this is not the easy job, but it's a good fit for you because you've already got the skill and you've already got the experience. And so here's the other thing that's really good for this, because remember, we're talking about short term extra work. We're talking about above and beyond your day job. And so we don't want to have to burn mental and emotional calories if we don't have to. More on that in a second. But this is our ideal scenario, these three things. It's available. They're desperate. They need somebody. It's easy. I don't need skill and experience. And it's a good fit. I've already got the skill and experience necessary. So give you a specific example here. This is what we call the freelance economy where uh, and let's just use, uh, we'll use, I'll give you two quick examples. One would be uh, somebody who's in technology, so they code, they're uh, a programmer. Well, you know, these guys and gals, they got the skill and experience. And so them taking on some freelance work, you know, again, not burning a lot of mental or emotional calories because they've got the skill and experience. Okay. And so we see this in the freelance economy really a lot with programmers. I mean, I've even reported on the show, you've got programmers that are knocking down two full-time jobs. Okay. Um, so that's what we're talking about there. Another thing would be I'm a marketer or I am a social media uh, uh, expert. Uh, again, you forgot the skill, you got the experience, and now you're looking to pick up 10, 20, 30 extra hours a week. And Yes, it's it is it is taxing because it's extra work, but you've got the skill and you've got the experience, and so you're not eating up a ton of emotional or what I'm calling mental calories. Now, a quick asterisk here: let's not forget that why we're discussing this. You need money right now because you've either done some dumb things or bad things have happened to you outside of your control. You need money, so this is not an ideal scenario. So this is not ideal. Did you catch that? Either through your own irresponsibility, like you racked up too much debt, bought stuff you couldn't afford, or a health thing, or just bad luck and life just happens, your HVAC goes out or whatever, and now you got a $7,500 bill. It's not an ideal scenario. So therefore, it's not going to be ideal in getting out of this situation. So we got to steal ourselves for that and go, wait a second, this is short term, it's going to suck. So... I laid out the ideal list of what I'm looking for if I need short-term money. But hear me say, look, beggars can't be choosers. And so while I'm giving you the ideal place to look, I wanted to kind of demystify uh, the search and just be super simple and practical. And that's what I've given you today with those three attributes. It's available, it's easy, and it's a good fit. Can we just say for for just being an adult here, we're in a sucky situation, so getting out of sucky is going to require more sucky. And so if I have to jump outside of those three scenarios, uh, I've got to do it. Now, that leads me to this. That leads me to this. And this is the mindset, okay? So I told you where to look. Now I want to just challenge you really quick on how to act. And this is really simple. Number one, get over yourself. Uh, there is a certain amount of pride that all of us have, and we're looking for this type of work where we're in a short-term situation. There is a temptation to start to think of yourself as too good for that job, too good to stack gro grocery shelves overnight. And, and, and maybe it's because you think, I'm too educated for this role, and you probably are. And you might think, well, this job is traditionally for low-income people, and you're right there too. But again, this is doing this because we have to. So here's what I want you to hear. No one's thinking about you. Nobody. You're worried about being embarrassed, essentially, is what's going on. I got news for you. Nobody is thinking about you. They got their own crap going on. They got their own issues. So do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do. This is short term. It's a short term strategy to stack cash. And so it's a, a season of intensity to stabilize ourselves financially and then, listen, once I get stable, I can move away from this intensity and I move to intentional and I can begin to chart a path for doing the kind of work that I really want to do that pays me what I want to make and I actually enjoy and there's some values connection. So remember, short-term thinking. Get over yourself. Nobody cares. And you're going to feel so much better when you fix your financial situation. 
That's how we make money right now. So get after it. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, I want you to stop and imagine your life four months from now. You got a new skill and a starting salary of more than $75,000. Now in 15 weeks, and for only $5,000, you can get the skills to land a job in front-end web development through a Bethel Tech micro-credential. And that's way less money and time that you'd spend on a traditional degree to make more dough. Listen, folks, coding skills are in high demand. So with Bethel Tech's front-end web development micro-credential or their data science micro-credential, you can move up. The next class starts April 29th, and the Bethel Tech folks offer you 10% off because you're a Ken Coleman Show listener. Go to BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman for details. Terms and conditions do apply. When it comes to winning at work, there are four questions that every human being will ask. And very, very many people will go through life and never get answers. The questions are, who am I? That speaks to your unique wiring. What do I want to do? That speaks to a, a sense of, of passion and, and interest. And we're talking about what do I want to do professionally? What do I want to do with my life? The third question is, where can I do that? That speaks to, oh, man, there's a lot of options. And this is an important choice. And I want to get it right. And then the, the, the last question is, how do I get there? And and that speaks to, I, I need a guide. I, I know that there is a better way to get up that mountain. So quick review, who am I? What do I want to do? Uh, where can I do it? And then how do I get there? And, and I've dedicated a lot of time to helping you answer those four questions. The Get Clear Career Assessment uh, really does answer uh, the first two. It allows you to get to a place. Some of you need a little more help to get from the who am I. That's, that's the primary question the assessment answers. Your unique wiring. What do you do best? What do you love to do? And then what results motivate you? And that's the who, and it's your wiring. And then those rest of those questions, the assessment gives you the information to find that out. Well, we know that some of you need a little more guidance. So I wrote a small book, and I emphasize small because it just needed to be packed with, let me grab you by the hand after you get the answer to the question of who am I, and then walk you through how to get the answers to the other three what do I want to do? Where can I do it? And how do I get there? And that book is called Find the Work You're Wired to Do. Short book, take you about an hour, if that, if you're a slow reader. I think it's probably a 45-minute read. If you like to read it, a pretty good clip. Uh, and of course, we've got the ebook and the audio book. If you pre-order this now at uh, kencoleman.com or ramseysolutions.com slash store, either one will get you there. If you pre-order the book, it comes out in a month. Um, this is not a big giant launch. It's just, I want to get this out really for a lot of you that need it now. And then a lot of graduates, high school and college graduates, it's the get clear career assessment, which is a tool we've been selling to hundreds of thousands of people. But now this little book comes with it and you get the, the, the code to the assessment with the hard cover, uh, the ebook and the audiobook. But if you just order the book now, you get all three formats and and essentially, that's going to get you three assessments as well. So you talk about a gift that keeps on giving. Go get it right now, RamseySolutions.com slash store or KenColeman.com. Pretty simple there. Okay, uh, this is interesting. You know, for, for years I've griped about um, what I believe to be an abuse of funds by colleges and universities, and I think the greatest uh, sinners – for lack of a better word today. Boy, that felt really churchy. I love that. I'm going to go with that. The greatest sinners on this are, are the Ivy League and these high-end schools that have huge endowments. We're talking about billions of dollars of endowments, and we know for a fact that while they have billions of dollars in their endowment, that they use very little of it, a small percentage, to actually help their students pay for school. So where's the money going? What's it doing? If you think I'm the only one pulling this up, you ought to really listen to what Malcolm Gladwell has said about these endowments. He's gone on record uh, and really calling out what is, a, uh, I think, really an abuse of riches. And so uh, this story, uh, the team brought to me, and I, I thought, man, now this is exciting. So we got a quick video that just will set this up, and, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Let's roll this, guys. To you, I'm happy to share with you 
that starting in August this year, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine will be tuition free. <laughs> How about that? Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. Uh, full confession, I had not seen that video. Alex, great job. Uh, that was a little bit more exciting than I thought it was going to be. Did you hear the guttural screams of these med students finding out that their tuition is is going away? And I say yay, because if we want the best and the brightest in the medical field, the people responsible to take care of us, shouldn't they be stress-free as it relates to money? Shouldn't we be able to get the best and brightest? Maybe students that come from low-income communities but are absolutely brilliant. God created them to be uh, maybe some of the most genius medical professionals the world's ever seen but we don't know because the barrier for entry is ridiculously high i'll never forget last fall uh i went to washington dc with jade warshaw my colleague on the ramsey show and we were there for uh to get reaction from real people in washington dc uh the day before Oh, well, the days of and the day before that we were walking through the parks and on georgetown's university or university campus and, uh, and this was because the student loan payments were going to become online. And so it's like, okay, the delay, the delay's over, and now they're coming online. So as a part of the Ramsey Show, Jade Warshaw and I and our amazing crew went to D.C. And, and, and we got reactions. And I'll never forget, in fact, Nathan was with us. And uh, Nathan, the guy that I'm thinking about is the med student that we talked to right on the mall, right on the, uh, the, the reflecting pool between the Washington Monument and the uh, Lincoln Memorial. I'll never forget it. Um, and I was just interviewing him, just saying, hey, what do you, you know, what'd you go to school for? What do you think about loans? And this guy's a med school student. And he told me how much he was in debt. It was well over $200,000. And he was telling me what his path was going to look like the first three or four years. This is a dude who's trying to save lives. I believe if memory serves, he was in, in the cardiology field. So here's a guy that's trying to save your heart. I mean... I want you to, I just want this to sink in for a moment. $250,000 in debt, roughly. And he was telling me what he was going to make. I think he was going to make like 60 or 80, like the first year or two as he's going through. And I may get that wrong, so don't fire any comments at me. But I know the first year it was like 60 or 80. And he was like, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my bills with that kind of debt. And, and this is the backdrop for this announcement. So the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, um, got a massive donation from Dr. Ruth Gottesman, and I may be saying that wrong, Goatsman, Gottsman, we'll say Gottsman. Uh, and she has spent 55 years as chair of the school's board, but she made the donation in the name of her late husband, David Sandy Gottsman, who uh, was an early investor of Berkshire Hathaway and longtime friend of Warren Buffett. Hello, I need that friend. I mean, guy's a longtime investor, Berkshire. Imagine how much money that he's made. Well, I'm about to tell you. Uh, this was obviously the largest donation to any medic medical school in the country. This is from uh, the actual uh, um, uh, the family on the donation here in the school. Um, this is a quote from Dr. Ruth Godsman. She said, I'm very thankful to my late husband, Sandy, uh, for leaving these funds in my care, and I feel blessed to be given the great privilege of making this gift to such a worthy cause. And I agree with her. Um, this has happened once in the past. Uh, apparently, Home Depot co-founder Ken Langone invested in NYU's medical centers, and in part due to his donations, NYU School of Medicine became the first medical school in the country to offer free tuition to accepted students. So hopefully this becomes a pattern. Um, and here's why. In an October survey of the Association of American Medical Colleges, they found that 70% of med students who graduated in 2023 have taken on some level of education debt. The average graduate left medical school owing more than, you ready for this? $200,000. So apparently, Nathan, the guy on the mall was, was in the average. The average grad student in 2023 left school more than $200,000. 
dollars in debt. And uh, for those of you who aren't med school students, you're going, well, what about me? Here's what I'm getting at. These schools have massive endowments. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown. I could go down the list. And a small percentage of most of them are uh, of their funds are going to help these students. So what's the point of the endowment? If you want to put out the best and brightest, how about putting out the best and brightest with no burden hanging on them? You know why they don't? Because it's big business. And I don't mind saying it. And I say good on this lady for saying, Dr. Gottsman, Dr. Ruth, she said, hey, no more, no more, no more tuition. Now, let me tell you why this is a good thing. Because the professors are getting paid. School's getting paid. And these kids are going to go learn how to take care of human bodies and help a lot of people and not have the debt. If, if the endowment is there and the money is there, use it for the thing that you say, colleges and university heads and boards, you say you're there for, which is education, not piling up money and having fun with the interest. Come on, wake up, America. This is great news. Hopefully this is the beginning of a domino effect. We'll see what happens. This is The Ken Coleman Show. I like that B3 in the background. Is that what that is? Any musicians in there? Wait, was it just an organ? Alex is telling me he shook that one off. Not a B3? I think it's a Wurlitzer, maybe. A Wurlitzer. Yeah, but nonetheless. Going to get comments for that. Did I mess it up? No, I think I did. Oh, you did? It's probably a Hammond. Okay. Either way, it's an organ. And I really dig it. it gives me a good vibe right now. Let's see if it... Uh, plays into our call with Teresa, who's on the line in Sarasota, Florida. Teresa, I am liking the organ jam in the background. Uh, hopefully you and I can make some sweet music here that helps you out. What's going on? <laughs> I can. Thank you. You bet. What's up? Um, well, I have um, a job that I hate. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that a time yeah. or two. Yeah, I know. you. You're skilled in dealing with that, too, so... Um, basically I work as a banker and I love some aspects of the job, like dealing with the customers and teaching, you know, helping my coworkers be successful. Um, but then there's other elements, um, that make me miserable, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Tell me what those are. Yeah. The, the sales, um, basically we're required with every conversation and every meeting to, pitch some sort of lending or, you know, credit card or something of that nature. Uh huh. Um, now, let me ask you this real quick. Is it, do you hate the function of sales, even if you were selling something that you liked? Uh, or is it that you hate selling something that you have a value disconnect with? Because I'm assuming that's what I'm hearing. I, I believe it's the value disconnect. Um, so if you were selling something that you... Me, so if you were selling something yeah. you liked, uh, that would not drain you. No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. That makes I a lot of really sense. I get really passionate about something I believe in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, and are yeah. you? And you're a people person, aren't you? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love helping people and making people, um, you know, getting them to do better. Or I don't. I took your career assessment actually, and Good. I have my mission statement. Can so. we can we go through the purpose <laughs> statement and let statement. yeah let's go mm -hmm. slow so everybody can follow at home and then I can write slowly. So go ahead, top three talents. Uh, connection. Connection. Instruction. All right, instruction. And, and compassion. Compa oh my gosh, it screams people, people, people. Those are <laughs> all three of those talents are people talents. Yes. Okay. And uh, now let's talk about the top three passions. We define this as work that we love to do. What do we got? This was actually really eye-opening for me. I didn't know how to label it, but you, your career assessment helped get that out. Good. Um, protecting. Protecting. Okay. Leading. Leading. And promoting. Promoting. Interesting. What was the biggest eye-opener for you in that list? 
Um, all three of those. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I get really adamant and really passionate um, about all three of those passions <laughs> yeah yeah um, that's not, interesting you know, lightly named yeah um love that all right let's uh we'll break that down in a minute if we need to because i think okay. we need to ideate i think that's where we sit today but i'm curious we'll see what you say and then our missional result that is what motivates you this is a result of work that just gives you the juice you're fired up what is that that was actually an eye-opener too that was an influence uh-huh now here's what's interesting to me um, Teresa, I don't know if you've heard me share this on the show before, but I'll share it br- briefly. There are four types of work. You could take every job in the world, and I believe that you can you can organize those jobs or the type of work into four categories. One is people work. Two is idea work. Three is process work. And four would be object work, working with objects. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Mm-hmm. And all listen, all your results, your top talents of connection, instruction, compassion, the the work you love is is protecting. Um and that's a very much an advocate type heart, uh mm-hmm. caring for people, what's right versus what's wrong, then leading was second. That's just all about influencing people. And then uh promoting and when it comes to promoting, that's uh, you you shared it with us early in the call. You're like, I can get really passionate about something that I believe in. And uh, and then if you go to influence, there's just a heavy, heavy, heavy. Every one of those results has a people it, are in partially in the people bucket or fully in the mm-hmm. people bucket. Because promoting could also be idea type of work, promoting ideas, you know, Um and protecting could have a function of, I, I want to protect a process, if you will. But all the stuff is screaming, people work. You are yes. you are really <laughs> good at working with people. True or false? Yes, I am. I you gotten... really enjoy yes. working with people. <laughs> true or false? True. Absolutely true. Love it. Okay. So we got that part. So, so we know the disconnect in this current banking job is actually not the type of work you're doing. It is what you are promoting. Yes. And the disconnect is I'm promoting debt products and I don't believe in them or I feel like I am in some way contributing to holding people back when all I really want to do is help people move forward. Right. So the good news is you shouldn't be in a state of confusion about why anymore, why you're not happy, why you hate it. Mm -hmm. And you should also not be in a state of confusion as to the type of thing I should be doing. So I think that the world is your oyster as it relates to um, looking for work where you use your talents of connection. That is a, that is a, just an, an innate ability to get on people's pages, get on the same page that they are find common ground. Uh, to use your talent of instruct instruction, you know, to show people the way. If I'm going to keep mm-hmm. it super simple, and then the talent of compassion is just your heart is always in tune. It's like it's like just scanning the world for where is someone hurting and can I be helping? Exactly. Yeah. And. I, I do help. There are some elements where I help people in the in the bank. I don't know. Do you have time to yes. hear my story real quick? Yeah, because I want to hear your story, and I want to hear your ideas on what you'd like to do, because I think you got ideas. Okay. So this is just one example of a customer, um, and this is more recent. That's why it's so touchy for me. Um, she came in. She had sat with several of our bankers and our manager. Um, the manager told me I needed to pitch a home equity line of credit, which I wholeheartedly disagree with mm-hmm. at any point unless the customer asks for it themselves. Right. Um, and so um, she owned her home, and that was the only thing she owned outright. She was almost 80 years old, mm-hmm. had no income besides Social Security. Mm. So instead of going through the home equity line of credit, um, 
I we took out all her credit card bills, asked her to bring her statements and everything she owed. We laid it out from smallest to biggest, and she paid off three in less than a month. Wow. That was not and in your was, manual, I guess. No, and I got in trouble <laughs> for it. <laughs> I'll you know? bet. I'll bet. Um, and, you know, and she's so happy. She is relieved now. She has a lot of yeah. less stress, a lot less pressure, and, yeah. you know, she still has her house. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I totally get it. This is This is very simple. The reason you hate your job is because there are times where you hate yourself in that job. Yes. All right. So we got to get out. Not today. We'll just know you're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything unethical. So that's what I, I want you to say. Like I, know. It's really, I know. It really puts a lot on me. I know. And I'm saying we're acknowledging that 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 is a disconnect to your values, which is why you feel that way. But what I'm saying is in this interim period, the, the time between where we are today when you hang up this call and you leave mm-hmm. and go do work that you care about that does not disconnect from your values, in between that time, you need to acknowledge the fact that you're not a bad person and you're not doing anything illegal. Home equity loans are not illegal, despite how mad Dave Ramsey gets about them. They're not <laughs> illegal. They're not illegal. Right. So you're not, you're not peddling drugs. Okay, sure, <laughs> if you want to say that. But my point is you're not doing anything bad, okay? Right. So you you got to be able to switch gears mentally so that if I'm wanting to make a major transition in my life and changing jobs to me is a major transition, I want to be wholly present and healthy and not beating myself up while I'm in that process. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. This is about your mindset. So... Here's here's a three-part question that I want you to answer over the next couple days. Take a week, 10 days. I don't care. You ready? Okay. Who are the people that I most want to help out in the world? What problem? This is part two. What problem or desire do they have? And what solutions to that problem or desire can I actually get excited about and offer? Meaning I got the chops, the skill set to be able to deliver that solution, right? And so that's the three-part question. And you look at it morning, noon, night, if you have to, at least once a day, and you will begin to see those opportunities present themselves. So you could stay in the financial world, presuming that you can uh, get connected to something that you believe in, a product or a service, uh, or you can move outside the financial world because you have a lot of transferable skill and experience, true or false? Yes. All right. So... That's where we're going to ideate right now. You begin to look at your purpose statement that you said absolutely hit you. It enlightened you. And now, now that now becomes your job description. So as you're looking at jobs that are actually out there, you read the job description and then you read your purpose statement side by side and say, does this job description appear to allow me to spend most of my day working on purpose? And then you will win at work. You got it? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Don't overthink this. You know who you are. You know what you love to do. We just aren't in the right place to do it. So thank you for the call, Teresa. You're a good lady. You're a good person. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.